Welcome back to Rim Racket. I'm your host, Jordan. And uh, today we're going to be going over the um, the over-unders that me, Preston, and Jacob did at the beginning of the season. Plus, we're going to talk about the playing games uh, that have happened so far. There's more to, that are happening today. These dogs, bro. There's more that are happening today, but uh, this will be out before then. Um, but before we do any of that, we always got to start off with some NBA news. Let me go over to Real GM real quick. That's my my news source for everything. Um, Warriors plan to maximize remaining years of Stephen Curry's career. Let's let's see what this says. This is from Zach Lowe from ESPN. Uh, the Golden State Warriors know the current core group's run is nearing its end, but <clears throat> but the Warriors have no intention of speeding up the process. According to Zach Lowe of ESPN, the plan remains to maximize the remaining years of Stephen Curry's career, and that means Golden State won't tank. The Warriors have immediate decisions to make for Klay Thompson and free agency, and Chris Paul, who has a $30 million non-guaranteed contract. Jonathan Kaminga is eligible to sign a rookie-scale extension. The Warriors are expected to at least check into trades involving Andrew Wiggins and possibly Draymond Green. Thompson would like to say, Thompson would like to say with the only team he's known. I think that means they meant stay. Would like to stay with the only team he's known, but he and Golden State haven't gotten close on a contract extension. Warriors coach Steve Kerr said he'd love to have Chris Paul back for next season, but that's unlikely to happen at such an inflated salary. Okay. Um, should I just go ahead and talk about it? <clears throat> Get it over with, since we're already on the topic. So, for those of you that don't know, I don't know how you don't know, but the Warriors lost. Our season is over. Um, but, you know, as a fan, it is what it is. I say it all the time. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. It's like, it's, it's, it's part of the game. You know, you win or you lose. You lost. That's it. But um, in terms of everything I just read, I think we, without a doubt, need to extend Jonathan Kaminga. Then we need to bring back Clay. I he he's not going out like that. And Steph, I think Steph would want him back. Um, he started to play better towards the end of the season, except for the playing game. He didn't score at all. And we needed him most, he vanished. But I just think he's such an integral part of everything that's happened over the years that it'd be weird not to bring him back. Um, now, if he wants more money, then that's on him. But as a Warriors fan and as, I don't know, I guess. Uh, no, nah, never mind. As a Warriors fan, <clears throat> um, I would love to have Clay Thompson back. I know he had a rough season. He had a couple rough seasons. But I'm not saying we have to start Clay and he has to get this superstar treat him that he's he's gotten in the past. I mean, we could bring him back and if he's not playing well again like he was at the beginning of the season, throw him back on the bench. He did it this year. Throw him back on the bench. If that's something that he doesn't want, then maybe he should look somewhere else. But I would love to bring Clay back. Draymond Green trades. I don't think we should explore Draymond Green trades. He still plays phenomenal defense, and he's he's the only guy in the league that knows where Steph is going to be at all times. He knows where Steph's at 24-7. I don't think we should give up on that. The only thing I ask of Draymond Green... <clears throat> Please, Draymond Green, if you see this, please stop with the shenanigans. Please, if you guys really want another title, if you want to get one more, I know Steph wants it. I know you want it. I know Clay wants it. If you guys want one more, all you have to do is just play ball. If you didn't do what you did at the beginning of the season and get suspended, we wouldn't be in this. We wouldn't even be in this predicament. We wouldn't be in the play-in, probably. We'd be out of it. We would have. I'm not saying we would have been a high seed, but we would have been out of it. 
So all I'm asking is to play ball, please. Draymond, Mr. Dre, play ball, please. Um, <clears throat> Chris Paul, I like Chris Paul, but he really wasn't as good as I thought he was going to be. Um, he had some games. He had some stinkers. He's very smart, yes, but he, he just wasn't as impactful off the bench as I thought he was going to be. I say for the amount of money that he, he's going to be getting, we don't bring him back. We do not bring him back. Unless, um, did it say it was an extension? Because if it's an extension, uh, Chris Paul, who has a thirty million non guaranteed contract. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. See you. See you, buddy. Um, Chris Paul. He's too much. It's too much for the the what he gave us. It's not enough for the amount that he's getting. Um. That's about it. Get rid of Dario Saric. Um, he's not, wasn't what we thought he was going to be. He could have used something, but he wasn't there. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis, you know, he's, he's, he was a rookie this season, so he's going to be better next season. He'll be good. Uh, Podzemski's got a year under his belt now. So I don't hate anything about this team. Andrew Wiggins. Bro, I am rooting for Andrew Wiggins. I want him to come back and play really good basketball again, but I just don't know if it'll be on this team. Um, if we trade Wiggs, trade him. Uh, if we don't, I just hope that he can, even if he's not playing great offense, if he could just lock in on defense, I think that that would help us a lot. And Last night during the, the playing game, I saw a couple possessions where he was on De'Aaron Fox and he was denying the ball, like hardcore deny ball on De'Aaron Fox. And unfortunately, the whole Kings organization was not missing shots, but it was it was good defense and we needed that. Um, Other than that, you know, that's about it. That's my Warriors rant. We lost. It is what it is. Uh, there's There's another season next year, another season after that. And another season after that. So, nothing to mull over. Um, And honestly, I I don't know if this is a weird take, but I think there's something, like, serene about your team not being in the playoffs or, uh, like, finals or something like that. Because it's like, as a fan, you have stress, right? Even if you're not on the court, it's like, oh, this is stressful. Like, you want your team to win. But if they're not there, then it's like, I don't really care who wins. I just want good basketball. So for the rest of the playoffs, as a viewer, I just get to watch for good basketball. I don't have to stress over Clay Thompson not making a shot. I don't have to stress over Keegan Murray getting left open for four threes in a row. I don't have to stress over uh, Keon Ellis playing out of his fucking mind. Shout out to Keon Ellis. He's, he's Uber. Um, but like I said. That's it uh, for the Warriors rant. We're just going to skip over that. Let's go back to the real the, the news. Let's go back to the news. Um, loading. I apologize. It's loading. There we go. Uh, Rockets sign Raphael Stone, Eli Wittes, multi-year extensions. Um, Kevin Young to leave the Suns to become head coach of BYU. Giannis Antetokounmpo not expected to play at start of first round. Yep. Um, so honestly that matchup right there with the Pacers without Giannis, bro, Pacers might be able to take it. They might be able to steal it. Low key, they might be able to steal it. Um Zion believed to have suffered left hamstring injury. Uh since we're talking about Zion, we can go ahead and talk about that game. So for those of you I keep saying for those of you that don't know, but you're watching a basketball player. You're listening to a basketball podcast, you know. Um, Zion was dogging. He he had 40 points. I think he had 40, 11, and 5. Um, and unfortunately, he got injured. I know a lot of people are like, me personally, if I was just feeling left leg soreness, I would have just stayed in the game. You know? I don't know. We weren't Zion. We don't know how, how, uh, gruesome the injury felt you know like we're not him 
So, <clears throat> but I do want to give my flowers to Zion because a lot of people are like, oh, the Pelicans are never going to get anywhere with Zion as the number one option. Shout out Cole. But in my opinion, I don't think Zion is the problem. I mean, he called him one dimensional. Is he one dimensional? Sure. Guess what? He's still dropping 40 at a at a 60% clip at the rim against whoever you want to throw at him. That's Zion. Point Zion minutes this year, I'd say they were a success. They were decent. In my opinion, my humble opinion, again, I'm not a Pelicans fan, so I didn't watch a ton of Pelicans games, but I watched them whenever they like were on, and I wasn't watching anything else. In my opinion, I think that the problem is CJ McCollum and Brandon Ingram. Now, here's my, my philosophy on that, if you want to hear it. Uh, CJ McCollum, he is a bucket getter. He's known... I apologize. I just ate before uh, recording this, so I might be a little, little burpy or whatever. Anyways, CJ McCollum, he's a bucket getter. What he does, buckets. Um, he can facilitate a little bit, but if he's not giving you buckets, not really doing anything. Like if he's not giving you 20, he ain't really doing anything. So, and I think he makes a lot of money for that to be an issue, right? Brandon Ingram. I like Brandon Ingram's game a lot. I like B.I.'s game a lot, but kind of the same thing. I mean, Brandon Ingram, he's he's there. He can score. He can facilitate a little bit. But when he's not doing either of those things, what is it? Nothing. There's nothing there. I think he had 11 points yesterday. 11 points. The Zion's 40. But Zion is the problem. Don't get it? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I think people just bash Zion because uh, he's six foot six and out of shape. Even though he he looked damn good, he's good. He looked good. Pause. Um, but I don't think Zion's the problem. I think you surround Zion with some shooters and a big man who can space the floor. That way he can have the lane. I think you're good. I don't. I mean, I don't think. Obviously, you're going to need more than just Zion. You're going to need a co-star. Uh, who that could be, I don't really know. But uh, give Trey Murphy minutes. Give him, give him minutes. He had 31. So it's not like he didn't get the playing time. But I'm just saying, like, start Trey Murphy. He's he's a very nice. Um, what else was I going to say? Shooters. Just surround him with, with three-point shooters. Space, space the floor with that guy. because. Uh, Brandon Ingram, can he knock it down? Sure, but he's not like a notorious three-point shooter. He's a he's a mid-range threat. So that's already like cutting into Zion's stuff. Anyways, um, that game, Lakers won. Lakers played good. The Pelicans didn't. I mean, they did have some bad bad runs, but uh, the Lakers won. So I believe it would be. The Lakers are playing the Nuggets, and now we'll see the Pelicans versus the Kings to see who plays. Uh, who do they play? Hold on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, um, 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 um. <laughs> NBA.com. Sorry about that. I uh, I should have done my. My um research, but I did not. <clears throat> so it's looking like. Oh my god, um, they will play for the chance of playing. Why does it not show it? Why is it so hard to find? Schedule. Um. Oh my God. Play in. 
bracket that up and doesn't want to just pop up. Here we go. Okay. Apologies. So the Lakers are playing the Nuggets and the Kings versus Pelicans. Whoever wins that game will play the Thunder. So um today it will be the Bulls versus the Hawks and the 76ers versus the Heat. And whoever wins Bulls versus Hawks will play the loser of Heat versus Sixers. Whoever wins Heat versus Sixers will go play the Knicks. And then the second turn where it will be the, the winner of 9-10 and the loser of 7-8. Whoever wins that game will go play Boston. So, yeah. Anyways, that's what it's looking like. Um, in terms of news, what else is going on? Uh, Kawhi Leonard to receive final roster spot on USA's Olympic team. That's that was yep. The Olympic team got announced. That's good. Uh, we have a squad, man. Um, Terry Rozier out versus Sixers. Duncan Robinson available to play. Uh, NBA considering. Excuse me. NBA considering making NBA Cup advancement the primary postseason tiebreaker. What does that mean? Um, this is from oh, this is from Shams. Uh, the first edition of the NBA Cup was a success. The NBA hoped it would bring added interest, added interested and in competitiveness to early season games. Those goals were achieved. Now the NBA is considering having NBA Cup results tied into postseason seeding. There it is. There it is. Um, there is a proposal to make advancement in the NBA Cup into the primary tiebreaker for postseason seeding. The NBA's Board of Governors ex is expected to consider the proposal and to eventually vote on it. There are different options that will be considered. One option is to make it, make it the primary tiebreaker over head-to-head -head results when two teams are tied. Another option is to have NBA Cup advancement as a second tiebreaker behind head-to-head -head results. There you go. Um, Ron Holland declares for the 2024 NBA draft, and Tyus Jones hopes to stay with the Wizards. It wants to start. I don't know. Um, that's it for your news. 17 minutes of news uh, and a rant. Yes. Um, so let's go ahead. A dollar bankroll is going to be kind of hard during NBA playoffs because there's only two teams that are going to be playing today so let's just take our dollar let's see what we can come up with let's do uh Miami Heat versus Sixers Atlanta Hawks versus Bulls let's do let me see let me see I'm going to open the ESPN app real quick while I'm doing this I'll go ahead and explain it in case we have new viewers um there's an app called Fliff not a sponsor but it's a betting app Pretty much legal in every state. Download it, sign up for it, blah, 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 blah. Eventually, once you get all that over with, they give you a free dollar every day. Now, I've taken this dollar and I've turned it into $50 multiple times. I'm just trying to help you guys. Same thing. Um, the minimum withdrawal from Fliff is 50 bucks. So you have to take that dollar, get it to 50 Obviously, I'm not just going to turn a dollar into 50 immediately. It'll be like, I'll turn this dollar into eight. Then we'll turn that eight into 16. Then we'll just keep going. Stuff like that. So, here we go. We'll check the Bulls versus Hawks first. Um, the Bulls are projected to win 60.4%. The Hawks have a 39.6%. The injury report. Seth Lundy is out for the Hawks. Onyeko Okongwu is out for the Hawks. And Jalen Johnson is out for the Hawks. Sadiq Bay is out for the season. Um, Chicago Bulls. Io is a game-time decision. Julian Phillips is out. Andre Drummond is game-time decision. Um, and the other two guys are out for the season. So it doesn't even matter. Um, so, that being said, Going back over to Fliff real quick, I'm going to take Chicago Bulls money line. Or, you know what? It's a dollar, right? It's a dollar. 
there's only two games on. So the only way to maximize our profit is try and take the underdog. So give me the Hawks. I'm going to take the Hawks. Miami Heat, Philadelphia 76ers. We go check that one out. Heat 76ers. Uh, 76ers are projected to win 63.5% to the Heat's 36.5%. And the Miami Heat, Duncan Robinson's game time. Terry Rozier is out. Um, Philadelphia 76ers, KJ Martin is game time. Will Embiid is game time. Anthony Melton is out. Robert Covington is out. Me personally, me personally, I think. I'm going to give it to the Heat. We're picking both underdogs, man. We're going to try to turn this dollar into five bucks. Because it's a dollar. Which, by the way, is a free dollar every day. So if you lose this one, you get a dollar tomorrow. But it is. Turn that, you can put that dollar on whatever you want. You don't even have to put the dollar on what I gave you. Maybe you just, I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, that's it. Uh, Hawks versus Heat. And... End it in. There we go. There's your dollar bankroll. Now, to get into the fun part of the episode, we're going to go over the uh, one of our very first episodes where what one of our very first episodes was us going over over unders for every team uh, based on their regular season record. So we'll start from the top Atlanta Hawks. He got a clean sweep. We all said under. Their line was set at 41 and a half. At the end of the season, 36 and 46. Next team was the Celtics. We all got a clean sweep. Uh, we all said over. It was at 54 and a half. They ended 64 and 18. Next team was the Nets. Me and Jacob both said under, and Preston picked the over. So me and Jacob got it right. Uh, their line was 37 and a half. They ended with 32 and 50. So, pretty good win. The Hornets were next up, and we all lost. All picked the over because, unfortunately, can't predict injuries. Um, their line was 30 and a half, and they ended 21 and 61. Our, ration, our rationalization was that having a healthy LaMelo ball, you could win 30 games. You could win 31 games. But, didn't happen. Um, they didn't win, nor was LaMelo healthy. So, we all lost that one. The Bulls were next. Me and Jacob picked the over. Preston picked the under. Me and Jacob won that one. Their line was 36 and a half. They ended 39 and 43. Our next one was the Cavs. Preston's team. We all picked the over. We lost. Uh, their line was 50 and a half. They ended 48 and 34. The Heat were the next team. Jacob picked the over, but me and Preston picked the under, and me and Preston got it right. Uh, their line was 48 and a half. They ended 46 and 36. Next team was the 76ers. Jacob picked the over. Me and Preston picked the under. Me and Preston got it right. Um, their line was 49 and a half. They ended 47 and 35. The next team was the Mavericks. Jacob picked the over. Me and Preston picked the under. Jacob got it right. Me and Preston got it wrong. Their line was 44 and a half. They ended 50 and 32. Um, I think my, my rationalization was that Kyrie and Luka were dogs, but they didn't get any help on defense. Wrong. Uh, Pistons. Me, Jacob picked the under. Preston picked the over. Me and Jacob got it correct. Their line was 28 and a half. They ended 14 and 68. The Nuggets, uh, Jacob picked. Jacob picked the under. Me and Preston both picked the over. Me and Preston got it right. Uh, their line was fifty-three and a half, and they ended fifty-seven and twenty-five. Next team, the Warriors. Now, if you watch that video, uh, there was a heated argument between me and Jacob. I guess I don't know. He was just trolling, and uh, yeah, but I picked the over. I thought adding Chris Paul would get us five extra wins. And um, I thought having a healthy Andrew Wiggins would also get us 
over the hump, but it didn't. Uh, Preston and Jacob both picked the under, and I picked the over as a hopeful fan. Uh, our line was 48 and a half. We ended with 46 and 36. Raymond didn't get suspended. Maybe we hit it, but this is what it is. We didn't. I lost. Um, Rockets. We all picked the under on the Rockets, and the Rockets came out and busted ass. Well, they went 41 to 41, but I mean, they were, their line was 31 and a half. So they, they beat it by 10. So the Rockets did pretty good. The Pacers, me and Jacob picked the over, Preston picked the under, uh, me and Jacob got it right. Their line was 38 and a half and they ended 47 and 35. The Clippers, uh, this was probably my worst pick. Um, but. Jacob picked the over, Preston picked the over, and I picked the under. Um, their line was 46 and a half. They ended 51 and 31, meaning Preston and Jacob won, and I lost. Um, the reason why I picked the under was because I thought that Kawhi Leonard uh, hadn't had like a, a good, healthy season in a minute, and he had, compared to his standards, he had a better one this year than he has for. A long time so uh yeah the lakers we all picked the over it was at 47 and a half they ended with 47 and 35 meaning that we hook right 47 and a half it didn't get over no no 47 and a half that means we lost yeah we lost Okay, so we all lost that one. Um, so hold on, I gotta do something real quick. Blah 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 blah. I have to tally up the. I have our total records at the end. Grizzlies. Um, Jacob picked the or we all picked the under, and we all got it right. Um, they their line was forty six and a half. They ended with twenty seven and fifty five. That line was crazy. Low key, if I could, if we had those, if we had Fandle, I would have probably put like, I don't even know. I would have put 100 on the under for that one because that line was crazy. Jaw was suspended 25 games. Like that line was wild. Um, The Wolves, we all picked the over. We all got it right. That line was 44 and a half. They ended 56 and 26. The Bucks, we all got it wrong. We all picked the over. Uh, they ended 53 and a half. They won 49, or they their line was 53 and a half. They ended with 49 and 33. Um, kind of sucked. Uh, the Pelicans, we all picked the over. We all hit. Their line was 44 and a half. They ended 49 and 33. The Knicks, we all picked the over. Their line was 44 and a half. They ended 50 and 32. Thunder, Jacob picked the over. Me and Preston picked the under. We got it wrong. What a snipe by Jacob. Uh, they were 44 and a half. They ended 57 and 25. Um, the Magic, we all picked the over. Their line was 36 and a half. And they ended 47 and 35. So we all won that one. The Suns, Jacob picked the over. Me and Preston picked the under. Um, me and Preston won. Their line was 52 and a half. They ended 49 and 33. The Kings, we all picked the over. Their line was set at 44 and a half, and they ended with 46 and 36, meaning we won. The Spurs, this was also up there with my worst pick. My two worst picks, in my opinion, were the Clippers one and the Spurs one. When I picked the Spurs one, I don't think I was in like a, hey, if I was putting money on this, would I actually do it? I was just like, I think Victor Wembanyama is really good. I think their team is, is decently solid. They're a young team, but they have good pieces. Uh, unfortunately, I was wrong. Me and Preston picked the over. Jacob picked the under. Uh, their line was 28 and a half. They ended with 22 and 60. So we lost that one. Jacob got it right. Uh, the Raptors, we all picked the under. All were successful. Their line was 36 and a half. They ended with 25 and 57. Excuse me. That was another one that, like, if I was actually betting money, I probably would have taken the under. I mean, I did take the under, like, in our thing. But, I mean, like, if I could bet money, 
I would have hammered that line. Because the Raptors at that time were just like, they're not good. And either Pascal or Pascal and OG, they were like, oh, they're going to get traded. So I was like, they're going to be in rebuild mode. Why is their line so high? Uh, the Jazz, we all suck. We all picked the over. Their line was 35 and a half, and they ended with 31 to 51, so we all missed that one. And the Wizards, we all picked the under. Their line was 24 and a half, and they ended with 15 and 67. Um, so just like last time, just like when we did the episode, the only team that's missing is the Trailblazers, but it's because they never gave us the Trailblazers uh, like record thing. They never gave us the option for the Trailblazers. So we never got one for them. So um, instead of all 30 teams, it's only 29. Here's the record. Uh, in last place is Preston. He went 16 and 13. That's still pretty good. That's um, more than 50%. Matter of fact, I'm going to do the percentages right now. Um, How do I do that? <laughs> um, hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, while I figure this out, I will. Um, how was your day? Uh, how about that? How was your day? I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead and get us get all of our percentages. I'm just going to round up. Um. So, anyways, yeah. After going through this, we actually didn't do too bad. Like, for our first time, we didn't do too bad at all. All of us went over 50%, so we all did pretty good. Um, and next year, I would like to do it again, even if that means I have to just message both of them and they send me back their picks. Um, hold on. Putting in the last one right now, and then I will give you the percentages. All right, so here we go. We, or Preston, came in last with a 16 and 13, 16, 13 record. He had a 55% hit rate. Pretty good. Um, in second place was me. I had 18 and 11. I had a 62% hit rate, and Jacob pulled it out by one. Uh, he had a 19 and 10 record. He had a 65%. So, going back through this, if I could change anything, it would be the Spurs pick and the Clippers pick. But I can't change those. That is what it is. But um, that, that, that's it. Again, for our first time doing anything like that, we did pretty good. Um, That's about it for the basketball, honestly. Uh, Hawks, Bulls tonight, 76ers, uh, Heat tonight as well. And uh, probably not going to have another episode until I might be able to do one Friday because I really won't have anything going on until later that evening anyways. So I might I might do an episode Friday since I can't do Saturday. Might. Not a promise. I might. Um, anyways, that's it for basketball. Uh, outside world stuff. Not really anything. Uh, I uploaded the second episode of my my career story thing that I'm doing. My my career series that I'm doing, where I take a random generated guy and I put him in high school, and we work his way up into college, and we get out of college. Ultimate goal is to win a championship. After we win the championship, then we send the rest of his career to see where he ends up. Um, I uploaded the second video last week. I might record the third video today, here, right now, after this. I don't know. Just uh, depends on it's only 10.30. I don't have to be anywhere until 2. So, yeah, low-key, I, I might. I might. So, yeah, if you guys are interested in that, the uh, channel will be in the description below. Um, that's about it, really. So, yep. Good luck to all the teams and all all you fans that are fans of teams. 
left in the playoffs. Uh, I hope you guys are successful in your run. And uh, just remember, at the end of the day, even if your team wins, even if your team loses, there's still next season. There's still hope. Never over unless your team gets traded or gets sold like the Oakland Athletic. Anyways, peace out. Hope you guys enjoy. And uh, I'll see you Friday, essentially.